Cool. I will, uh, and you, you probably can't raise the zoom hand on that one, but I can spotlight it when you're drawing. Oh, there you are. I'm going to make that one co-host too, as weird as do, that do is. You still need a, do you still need to raise hand? If it's easy, but yeah. I know how it can be on a phone. It's a little tricky sometimes. Reaction, raise hand. Okay. All right, we're starting um, I will, uh, on YouTube. You probably can't raise the zoom hand on that. There we go. We'll start recording. Oh, cool. Whoa, we get two Annas. <laughs> Sorry. So it's funny. It's fine. You're, you're good. I'm going to share my screen and start and do all that stuff. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it's Friday Night Comics. Um, it's the We Believe in, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> Comics Friday Night Workshops. It's the Sequential Artist Workshop, um, or SAW. And uh, what does that mean? That means you're at our nonprofit comics school and comics community and comics world. Um, you can find us at learn.sawcomics.org if you haven't been there. Uh, we're a nonprofit, 501c3 and all that. We have lots of courses. We have lots of other ways to make your world better and your art better and your vision more what you want it to be. Uh, next week in this spot, Sarah Merck is going to be helping us draw our teenage self. Um, that could be good or bad for <laughs> many of us. Um, ongoing things happening. Lots of ongoing things happening. Josh Bayer is teaching starting um two weeks from now his ongoing sort of like just rolling courses with josh and a lot of people are fans of his and so we want to encourage that if you're interested um our our next uh short course is diy publishing with sarah maloney that starts february 3rd so next week i think ongoing classes with georgia weber who does saturday drawing health um uh and that's real nice one hour a week and sustainable diary comics with jd lunch it's a really nice um experience for jd just sort of trying to get at the heart of the matter and and keep going um what else well this was in the queue we had a really nice no straight lines viewing last week if you were there um i'm so glad you were there if you weren't the q a that we had with producer justin hall and with star jen uh jennifer camper and some others was really fun and that'll be on our youtube channel soon so look for that in the email or in an email or some other things anyway Social media, if you are on it and want to share tonight, um, do it with the hashtag Friday Night Comics. We are at Comics Workshop, and I'll put Anna's uh, Anna's tag. Is that what they call it in the in the chat? Um, you can also join us at members.sawcomics.org. Um, let's see. So thank you for everyone who donated um, tonight and any other night. Um, it really helps uh, keep us afloat, keep these free um uh support our artists and things like that another way you can continue to do that is with a sustaining donation um which you can do at learn.sawcomics.org um so anna if anna's almost ready i'm ready well, i'm ready all right I'm ready. right on, right sorry. rock on okay so <laughs> excuse me so no trolling or hate speech today please or an, any day <laughs> Is that ever Oh, please. I'll talk about it later. I'll tell you oh later. Oh, my goodness. I'm let's so please, sorry. Let's please keep it PG-13. Yeah, that's why we actually keep everyone muted now. Um, anyway, enjoy. This is Anna Salheim's. Tell me, it is your fourth time doing this or third? It is my third. Third. Okay. But wow. that is a that is a record, at least for our tenure here at, uh, at Sequential Artist Workshop. And so I'm really excited. And you're just so I'm glad you're doing expressive things today because you are such an expressive cartoonist in that thing. Oh, we don't have it. But the the square we were promoting this with was so, so great. And fun. I, I have it. It'll be part of my presentation. Yay. OK, well, I'm going to spotlight you. I'm okay. going to remove myself to the chat and I will summarize anything that needs to be summarized and we can just have a good time. So I am sharing my screen. Awesome, Anna, thank you. I'm also gonna spotlight you while I can. Okay, so give me one moment. Where is that? Oh, get everybody out of the way. Um, and that is the wrong thing. This is the right thing. Okay, hello everybody. I'm not sure how to get rid of that, but I'm gonna get it out of, oh. So I don't know how to get rid of this top. Um, that looks great. 
but I will start with, my name is Anna Selheim. I am um, a cartoonist based out of Baltimore. Um, I do primarily autobiographical comics, but I also do fictional comics that focus on the interior lives of the protagonist. This is where you can find me. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, uh, you can find me on Patreon, Instagram, Tumblr, and TikTok at Anna Selheim. You can read a lot of my comics for free at AnnaSelheim.com. And I have a podcast with my best friend, Teresa Schultz, called Make Art Talk S, where <laughs> me and her make art and talk BS. So, oh, for goodness, come on, bud. This should, why is, oh, here we go. So this is tonight's uh, workshop, Making Expressive Comics. Now, was it last week? I watched um, Underpants and Overbites uh, presentation. Was that last week? That was last week, Jackie. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is like a perfect follow-up. She talked a lot about her comics are very much based in metaphor. Mine is showing um, how to convey emotion with character. Um, and I think they go hand in hand. So I think it's perfect timing. Um, so not only am I a cartoonist, uh, I am also an art educator here in Baltimore. I'm currently serving in AmeriCorps and uh, teaching art and comics to refugees throughout Baltimore City. Baltimore is a safe haven city and I teach comics and art and help kids with homework uh, the students range from age five to 21. Um, here are a couple pages I did of a promotional zine for the Refugee Youth Project who are who I work with. Um, one of the assignments I did was uh, you have to draw yourself as a wizard, uh, mythical creature, or a superhero and then describe your superpowers. Um, so Shekinah is this kid down at the bottom, uh, or no, she's the one that has, uh, her superpower is magic and she is a fairy. And then uh, Falud is um, in first grade, Shekinah is also in first grade, and one of his superpowers is to be shy. And he also made himself a superhero, a super saiyan, which is insane to me that kids today, and even if they've been here for like two years, from the Dominican Re uh, Republic of Congo know who Goku is and the over 9,000 uh, power level meme. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's wild. So this is one of the templates I give some of my older kids. Um, this would be for third to fifth graders. Comics is a great way to help these kids with both expressing themselves and practice their English. So, this is a template I gave them um, for they have to create a character and uh, express through the face the various emotions that that character would have. This is an example that I used to show these kids how they can make their characters expressive. This is based on one of my students, Mahanids. Uh, we had a character generator and one of the characters that came up was a magical grumpy pumpkin. So I used his character as an example of what I want them to do to fill out the sheet. Um, it is based on this drawing, which is my favorite drawing from 2022 from any of my youth. So um, that so a lot of people think that uh, actually Tom, I kind of want Tom there in case you keep in case you have anything to say. I feel like I'm cutting you off. I'm here. Okay, no, I'm I not being. Sorry. You're not cutting me off. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so I'm also working on a book right now. That's primarily what I'm doing. Besides the Refugee Youth Project zine and some fine art pieces I've been working on, my real project I've been working on the last couple of years is a book. Um, and people think that um, you only express yourself through your face. Uh, much of my book takes place. Come on, bro. Okay, much of my sorry, that was a computer. Um, much of my fate of my book takes place in medical offices during COVID. So uh the entire lower half of my face is often completely covered up in this book and just in general. And while expressive eyes and eyebrows are very important, um the the something that also aids to express how I am feeling is body language. 
I think Will Eisner um, has the best examples of this in one of his graphic novels uh, that teaches comics. Um, you can see that this character is saying literally the exact same dialogue over and over and over, but because of both the facial expression and the body language, the tone in which he is saying, I'm sorry, is completely different. Um, so body language is really a big, is something I think people overlook, but can really enhance how you make a character expressive. Uh, this is one of my favorite comics ever. I recommend everybody read it. His name is Mr. Lovenstein. He's on Instagram and Tumblr and maybe Twitter. I have no idea. Twitter, I got off many years ago. He's welcome to everybody that's like late to the party and didn't realize how terrible it was. But um, Mr. Lovenstein, I would recommend going to his website because he has this brilliant thing where if you click on the comic, there'll be a secret panel that'll add a second punchline to every comic. And uh, he does a lot of relatable gag or just like silly gag strip comics. Um, and I'm just very impressed with how expressive he can make these characters. There's only one panel here where a character even has eyebrows, but um, the taking this simple character design and then emphasizing it both with the face and the body melting um, enhances the punchline so much more than if he just, if it was drawn with just showing the facial expression. Um, this is probably the best example I've ever seen of just a, of a character design body enhancing an emotion. This dog doesn't even have a body. He just has, bo he just has uh, uh, hair, but the fact that it sticks up and spreads out in a particular way when he is excited versus default versus calm is uh, just a really good way to express a character. It's just a really brilliant design. Uh, there's also another thing that you can do to enhance um, expression. Uh, Mort Walker is a creator of Beetle Bailey and High and Lois. Um, and he wrote an entire book on uh, comicking. And one of the terms he came up with was emanata. Emanata are graphics that are shown throughout a comic that show both the, just the interior interior state of something. So here is a man in various levels of drunkenness that he shows not only through facial expression, but also different graphics that get crazier and crazier as the drunker he gets. Um, and this is not only something that has to do, be done with people. You see this woman in various levels of distress at the top, but also you can have emanata that uh, shows a hot cup of coffee, a aroma, a good smelling pie, like an aroma, fragrant pie, and a bright sun. And emanata is another thing that can be used to really enhance and further convey uh, the interior state of a character or anything really. Um, this is one of the best scenes I own. I got it like over a decade ago. It is a 24-hour comic by Merrick Bennett. I'm pretty sure all of you know what 24-hour comics is, but if you don't, um, a 24-hour comic is a 24-page comic that has to be done in less than 24 hours, or in 24 hours or less, I should say. Now that a lot of the people that grew up with this are older, they are starting to do 48-hour comic weekend, where they do a 24-page comic in 48 hours so that they can get some sleep. Um, and... I, as someone who just, I refuse to suffer for my art, so I've never participated in 24-hour comic day, but um, uh, this is drawn in a very simplified style versus his regular work because he made this in such a short time frame, but you can see the pain that this stick figure, and he's a literal stick figure, is experiencing because of the combination of facial uh, expression, body language, and the emanata. So it's just a, and this comic, it, it primarily focuses on health. There are a couple of random things that are not health related, but um, it's very important to see that even though they're very simple drawings, you can get, it, it conveys the narrative of all of these comics very well. They're all like little one-offs. Um, and that is a thing about comics that I think a lot of people don't, if they're not really familiar with, don't understand is that the narrative aspect of comics is really what makes them powerful. So you can have, I show this to my students because a lot of times they will get insecure about their lack of art skills. 
but it, you can have the simplest drawings ever as long as it conveys an interesting story and effectively shows that story. That is what makes a successful comic over um, just some immaculate drawings. And uh, this this is one you can see through the emanata, uh, especially in the bottom panel and the body language and the facial expression. You can you understand everybody's emotion immediately and what is happening in the story. And now I'm going to do something a little unfair and I'm going to use illustrations as an example because I couldn't think of a comic that does this. But many comics do this. Many pieces of animation do this. Um, this is a drawing. I'm using two examples of drawings by a Disney animator who is actually the director of Turning Red, which is a wonderful movie, um, Disney Plus movie. But this is a quick sketch that she did of Miles Moranis as Spider-Man. And it's really effective. You can tell he is just really relaxing, chilling out and eating a messy hot dog. And he gets, he's taking too big of a bite. There's crumbs everywhere. And it's just, it's telling a story in a way that this illustration isn't. Now that was a quick sketch. This is a more polished illustration, but it is so much stiffer um, because uh, she's more interested in showing a pretty face than she is actually showing a, uh, uh like a story like this woman doesn't even get to really take a bite of this bun she's got perfect <laughs> lipstick and this is something that happens over and over and over again in both comics and animation and pretty much anything that is illustration related especially with all attractive conventional attractive characters but especially conventionally attractive women is that they don't want to let characters that are experiencing emotions um look ugly even for a second a uh, very good example is if you can think of like pretty much any marvel comic where a woman is crying because she lost her entire or like marvel supergirl comic where a woman is crying because she lost her entire family or and like and there's a single tear coming out this doesn't tell <laughs> this doesn't tell a story in a way that this tells a story and this is a quick sketch and because it's a guy and it, this is a illustrated drawing that focuses on her being conventionally attractive. Like it's just, I, I just, yeah. So I just want to, I want to ask all of you that when you are trying to convey emotions in your characters in your future work, even if you have a hot lady, you make sure she actually is allowed to be ugly for a second in a panel so she can actually feel her feelings. Um, so, Tonight's rules, and I really wish I could hide this, but it's fine. Um, so to rules for tonight's car, uh, comics, it's pretty, it's pretty bare, but one is that you are going to have a character that is quote unquote monologuing for at least three panels in a row. Monologuing is a term that Brad Bird, uh, I'm sorry, he's not the one who created the creative, uh, the Incredibles, but Villains in The Incredibles would get swept up talking about their plans for taking over the world, and they would be used as a distraction method for superheroes to defeat them. It's kind of a time killer. Um, this You can have a character that is either uh, doing a anger-fueled rant. You can have someone geeking out excitedly over something. You can have someone experiencing a panic attack. It doesn't matter. The monologue is up to you, but it has to be for minimum at least three panels. And then the second rule is that one of these panels needs to be a full body shot so that you can really have an opportunity to use uh, to use uh, body language to really oomph your the way that a emotion is being expressed. Um, and then I will turn off sharing, I think. How do I do that? Uh, hmm. oh my goodness how do i do i have new share um i might be able to stop it but i, I think stop you... share hey it's literally right there dude <laughs> okay my god all right no stop share okay those were great oh. examples anna yeah so yeah this stuff is like i'm a very expressive person and character expression is also very important to me um so yeah 
Should I spotlight your your other? Are you going to draw for us? I am going to draw. Yes, you, you love, absolutely should. Okay. And I okay. It needs to. Hey, 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 buddy. How do we? Oh yeah, you're looking at your roof, huh? Yeah. Give me a second. Uh, later. And we need to. Come on, bud. So yeah. sometimes. There we go. Sometimes people like. Um. First of all, people are asking how much time, and my guess is about 20 minutes, but um, sometimes people like to, to have another prompt if they're stuck. So like, what would you suggest if I don't have a monologue at the ready? Uh, show yourself either, either, some, uh, either write about something that pisses you off, or <laughs> if you are excited about some piece of popular culture, write yourself geeking out about that. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm putting that in the chat. Because that's what I'm about to do. That's for sure. <laughs> Was it popular culture? Is that what you said? Popular. Yeah, popular culture. It's just like uh -huh. a piece of media. Or if there's something you're really excited about, talk about why you're excited about it. Just have yourself geeking out about it. Hi. Or... I don't know. I'm a very angry person. So I can do a rage fill rant at the drop of a hat about all sorts of things. God knows I've been on a couple today, but um, that may <laughs> not work for anyone if you're more chill. So. All right. And we're going to watch Anna draw. How many panels are you going to do? I have no idea yet. I no think. Idea. Yeah. I kind of have a vague idea what I'm doing. Um, what I'm going to try to do is... I'm going to try an interesting layout again. I feel like every time I've done an interesting layout in these workshops, it has been unsuccessful in terms of readability, but I'm going to try. Um, but I have the beats down and what I'm going to see if I can do it quick enough that I can both do it is my realistic and like self realistic, like me as a human being and me as my avatar over top of it so that I can show both of them expressing themselves. Let's see You're if I draw two versions of yourself. I'm gonna try. We'll Whoa. see. Okay, I'm putting that in the chat. Just this, it's yeah. like evil can evil kind of level stuff. Yeah. Um, so. What? Of course, of course, this is never gonna happen. <laughs> All I do in my comics is have people monologuing, so I don't have any idea what to do. Let's see. I'm going to come up with something I else. Good. I think it's good. I mean, you know I'm a fan of your work. I don't know. Thank you. It was nice to hear. Oh, yeah. So I thought I was telling... Uh, you, don't, you don't have to butter up the host. It's okay. <laughs> but I was telling when we met at... Um, at the show in Rhode Island, yeah, I was telling um, Layla how, uh, uh, like, you were like an icon when I was growing up. Like Hutch Owen, I own so many Hutch Owen books. No, oh. like you're a superstar. I, I... <laughs> talk about good good way to angry rant about the ills of society is is a good hutch owen rant that is for sure <laughs> well thank you and i i hope we can keep the cycle going mm -hmm. each inspiring each other i'm very inspired by what you're doing i can't believe you're working for americorps that's so that's so super cool yeah so um you know i've been going through some disability stuff uh whoa i don't want that um I've been going through some disability stuff and I was fired. I was an administrative assistant for a decade at various places. And I was fired from my last job for some disability um, uh, related, like I fell asleep on the job due to some disability stuff and we settled out of court. And mm. so I am now using AmeriCorps as a way to kind of start a career change and mm. focus more on art education. Um, so yeah, but no, I'm having a good time. I, my boyfriend thinks it's very funny that my, um, 
anti hard line anti child stance in terms of not having children, but just like straight up not liking them has softened now that I teach a group, a bunch of elementary school kids. <laughs> Cracking open all sorts of uh, <sighs> eggs today. Yeah. So you're drawing upside down. So I'm going to try and read that. Look, I, oh, I'm oh, there so we go. Sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. And if I, whenever I do my TikTok, I have to reverse the video. I have not been able to figure out a good way to like set up this camera system. Even that is such an expressive character. What great body language she has. And just in her standing, you know, and her doing that with her elbows and shoulders. It's really. That's a big. Yeah, that's a big thing about, um, that's a really big thing for me about body language is that, cause I am, a lot of my comics are just talking heads, but if you just throw a hand in there, <laughs> you go, You're, it's gonna be totally fun. The old explaining hand they say sometimes. So Anna's on panel two. If you're working on a three or four panel comic, maybe you're almost getting to panel two. I find I don't have a rant at the ready, but I'm just drawing a character in poses and expressions, and I'll figure out what he's saying afterwards, which is probably backwards. But You're lacking a rant? <laughs> oh, if I can go to my notebooks are full of them, so I just don't have them nearby. I'm focusing on my hosting duties. Yeah, I am going to say that I probably could get two comics done if I was not talking, but the fact that I'm talking and writing, if I was just drawing, I'd be able to get it done in a heartbeat, but I don't think I can. I know, and I'm and I'm encouraging no, no. you to talk more. No, that's fine, that's good. You know, you're the professional educator here. You gotta tell me what the oh, people think. Well. Now we love, we love, well, we also love to chit chat while we draw. What do you think about this new TV show with Natasha Leone coming out? I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> what um that name sounds familiar. I don't know who that is. Well, she she was the star of this show called uh, Russian Doll, which was really marvelous. She wrote and wrote it and spearheaded it, and it was just a real, real whip smart series. And um, but now she's in something. I think she's very charismatic, and it's really like would watch her say or do anything. And um, but she's in new, some sort of new crime drama, but it's also got the leader of the mountain goats in it playing some sort of musician, or I don't know. It just sounds like suddenly it's in all the news, all the news that isn't horrible seems to be talking about that show. So I, uh, yeah. I, it is interesting. Yeah. I don't really watch TV anymore, even though the first oh. thing you ever had me for was Tuca and Birdie. I don't watch TV for the most part. Um, oh, oh, see people in the chat are, are yep. Yeah, there's, yeah, they're saying, uh, Oh, right. And she was orange. She was in orange is the new black, which I never saw. But and the, yeah. anyway, since you you're not that's not in your uh, sphere, no. we can we can move on to something else. No, I will say for orange is the new black is uh, uh, there is a hot bald lady in that, apparently, <laughs> maybe non-binary person. Uh -huh. and, and they went to my high school. They were in my class. I went to an arts high school uh, in college or they, well, I went to an arts high school in D.C., um, and, uh, um, hold on one second. Let me write this panel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having a really hard time today. No. And we're causing, we're really, it's like, I'm throwing you a curveball. I don't mean to do that. It's just fun to talk. Yeah, for sure. No. Um, so, but that person was in my class in high school and I don't remember them at all which is typical for me because I barely knew anyone in my class. Um, but I, uh, they are super successful now. And the only story I have about them, maybe someone in the chat knows who they are. Um, but 
they, my friend was smoking a cigarette outside of the high school and and she plucked it out of his mouth and stomped it on the ground and said smoking is disgusting and then walked away and that's my only connection to Orange is the New Black like so is Natasha Leon the lead of Orange is the New Black? I, I don't think she was the lead. Okay. Samira Wiley somebody says is that the name? Is that a hot black person with that And then Jackie and they, says boo black. And then, yeah, it sounds like that's, it sounds like they got a beat on her. Yeah, yeah. And then in real life, I do know that there was a writer for Orange is a New Black that was married to a man and then fell in love with that actor slash actress. And uh, now they are together. And that is like, that's all I know about that too. I know a lot of stupid celebrity gossip, considering that I don't know <laughs> any celebrities or what they're in, but I listen to a lot of podcasts with people from California, and they just never shut up about that stuff. So I'm surprised I haven't heard of this new show. Well, you know, while you're at it, and again, I know I'm distracting you from, or distracting you from drawing, but tell us about your podcast, which I have not heard. Talk, oh, uh, make uh, our profit. Sorry. I know we're, it's still PG-13 if we only say it once. It, oh, yes. Um, yeah. So the podcast is not PG-13. Right. Um, I will say that. Um, but that being said, I don't think it's like particularly problematic. It's just got swear words. Um, I, I will say it's just me and my friend, uh, Teresa. Teresa makes embroidery and I make comics and we will just make art and sit together and talk a bunch of nonsense. And we'll occasionally have femme and female artists on that make art with us and talk nonsense and it'll range from anything like we had one of Teresa's best friends came on who's a big stand-up comedy fan but is also blind so we got into a little bit of like just how they live as a blind person they made an embroidery piece but then there's also just me and Teresa we'll sit there and then um we will talk about the new Space Jam movie that came out a couple years ago because it was she she had just seen it in theaters and that episode is longer than the actual movie so like <laughs> it's an acquired taste but um it's a good time um i'd say that if you're going to check out episodes the strongest would probably be the one with britney pope uh she takes us through the backstreet boys discography um Britney's a diehard uh, Backstreet Boys fan. Um, personally, I think the Space Jam episode is good. I don't think anyone has gotten through it. Um, but uh, there's there's a couple, there's some really good episodes here and there. And it's just two people hanging out and shooting the breeze kind of deal. This sounds fun. Yeah, it is. It's fun to make for sure. And we've gotten to meet some cool people around the city, too, that well, I was going to ask if your other friend was local or if your other host was. Yes. Yeah. I see. I see. We, we've had we had my friends Tep and Janny on from when I was in Vermont with I was visiting them at the Center for Cartoon Studies uh, in, in Burlington. Um, and they I didn't like the vibe of having someone not in the room because Teresa was back in Baltimore. And I just, I, yeah, we're only going to have IRL guests from now on. Like, I don't like the, I did not like, it was too awkward. I felt, even though she thought it was fine, but I just thought it was weird uh, in terms of, you know, talking over each other and stuff. Okay. Well, let's get back to, so what are you making a comic about? Can we ask I, that? Yes. I am making a comic. Uh and there's no way to make that not upside down, right? Is it upside down now? Oh, no. well, now it's sideways. Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, it's a little better. Okay, little this is a little better. Okay, a little better. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Um. Oh, I didn't realize I could turn that. Look at that. I should have asked sooner. Somebody was asking. That's, That's great. Awesome. This is good er to know. Erica first. says, "Boom." Boom. That is, oh, for goodness' sake. Um, <laughs> I love breakthroughs. <laughs> come on. Okay. So, um, this is about, I, well, now we can read it. Yes. I have been obsessed. I watched Sex in the City once in college. The enemy. 
I was a rant about Sex in the City. The second Sex in the City, the, the okay. newest season, because I just think they did a wild misstep. I watched it once in college um, with uh, my college roommate. And for some reason, I and I didn't think it was that big of an impact in my life. And it's but it's one of those shows that I never shut up about. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> and so the reboot was announced during COVID and I was an essential worker. So, um, so, uh, the only way I felt that they could, I was an essential worker that kept going in the office because my managers were COVID deniers. So, but it was a national, it was a national brand. It was a national, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, organization. So, um, so, uh, like they did have to wear masks and stuff like legally, Maryland was very strict about that. But I could have done my job from home, but I was working in an office. Um, and so when Sex in the City was announced, like the second season or the, the reboot, I was like, the only way that this is going to work is if they uh, show that all of the characters from Sex in the City were terrible people. And that like, like you can't root for Sex in the City, like the characters for Sex in the City now as... Um, my my friend pointed out that like Mr. Big would be friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Like, <laughs> like it, they're they're just trash people. And the only way you can make that work, and I was literally about to, um, but now since I made that joke in person, I'm gonna say insert up uh, insert Mr. Big. Yeah, there's this literally the first episode when he's talking about um Jeffrey. Wow, let's see if I can spell Epstein. Um, joke here. When I first uh when I first um the first episode of Sex in the City shows him eating lunch with Trump because they film it at Trump Tower and Trump had something in his contract that if you filmed at Trump Tower, you had to have him in the movie, which is why he had the SAG license and stuff right so that's why he's in home alone and all these other movies and little cameos because in order to yeah so it's like so the only way that you could um yeah the only way uh you could uh the only way that you could do this and make it work is to be like hey these people are the you know what i mean they like these people are the problem and you know, they've had kind of a wake up call because we're in the middle of a pandemic and like social unrest and like all this other stuff because they were vile in the original series. <laughs> but like they were vile in the original series, but I think, but the mainstream media didn't realize like how horrendous they were and just kind of talked about their clothing and stuff. And I think they tried to do that in the reboot. Um, um, but... I think uh, the people that wrote it are from like the original team of people that wrote it. So like, what's her name? Like, uh, Harry is like on a podcast, but they make it like a shock jock live radio show because they don't know anything about how, how podcasts work, stuff like that. (laughs) I think they just like, and then they'll have a character where they're trying to show, like, they're trying to be inclusive about like queerness and non-binary stuff and, and like, and just racial stuff and but there's a character where their only personality trait is that they are a non-binary comedian and all they do is talk about that they're a non-binary comedian and their stand-up it's just it's it's so wildly poorly done and i think they had an opportunity to to but it just seemed like it it seemed such a it was so gross when i was stuck at either at home or working to have like to have the them be like oh no we're bringing it back and also samantha's not going to be there because she hates the act the rest of the actresses um uh which is another reason it just never should have been made um and i (laughs) again this is um this is a this is definitely something where i did not think i'd have strong opinions about it but i have been upset (laughs) with people's like reactions to um Yeah, I've been obsessed with people's reactions over uh, how terrible it's been. So, 
So I, I think we've gotten you to rant about it rather than draw the rant. So I apologize I if we've it, it, it's, uh, it's distracted totally, you from drawing. It's totally fine. I'm almost done. I just, the rant wasn't as as great as it could have been, but. <laughs> I think, and I love that you've got a dog, two dogs in the end, sort of staring. Uh, what are they going to say? What are you? Walter says, don't sugarcoat it. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see that last panel. It's hiding away from the foot, from the, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Anna, can I start spotlighting people or letting people? Absolutely. Can. I'm so hand? sorry for my poor no, performance. It's fine. No, it's great. No, stop it. Now is a great time to raise your Zoom hand if you would like to share. I don't know why Zoom just capitalized the H. We will uh, share until 8.15 or so. Um, so. So, Anna. Yes. Can we read that real fast? Uh, yeah, so I say, look, I just think the timing sucks, but it's co it's COVID and a Sex in the City's comeback is tasteless. People are dying. Sex in the City is all about opulence and frivolity, but the characters are all awful. You can't root for them during COVID. They're the rich enemy elite scum, and it's supposed to be that we're all against, but I forgot to say that. And <laughs> then I would have made the same joke about Mr. Big, who is the like Prince Charming in that. Um, is would be friends with Ms. with Jeffrey Epstein, you know what I mean? And then my dogs don't care and they start to leave. And then I say, get back here, I'm not done. Because <laughs> I also talk to them, I used to talk to them all the time anyway, but especially during um especially during COVID, uh I um I started I couldn't see my friends. So I was just talking to my boyfriend and then clients all day on the phone, and then uh the dogs and that was it because you just get tired you get tired of skype calls after a while so yeah, yeah. love that last panel with the arms moving like this and yeah. very love all those expressive uh, panels thanks so much for demonstrating so i'll cue some people up we've got troy alun adam and then maybe a few others after that so i'm going to ask everyone to unmute and then i will spotlight you and then anna can take a look I agreed. It is also good to talk to animals. I'm going to leave my, I'm going to leave the uh, camera. Uh, I'm going to leave my iPhone zoom in the meeting. I'm going to leave the zoom meeting on my iPhone. Oh, okay. So That's fine. Work. So let me get out of here or maybe not, but I'm just moving this anyway. Okay. <laughs> Sake. Dude, you know, I had a setup, but I had <laughs> a table and it's just been, <sighs> okay. okay. We're all set. Hi there. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good. Sorry, I've never done this before. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, so I did a three panels of a scenario that happens to me a lot. Um, and the rant is actually going on in my head. It's in a thought bubble. Uh, here it is. It starts with uh, me over here. And I'm semi calm, but not very happy. And I'm saying, what the hell? I've been standing here for God knows how long and nobody is moving. What's wrong with these people? Uh, here I'm um, a little more uh, <laughs> upset. What the heck are they doing in there? Reading War and Peace for crying out loud. And then we see that... Uh, Oh. It's a bunch of women waiting for the washroom. And That's I'm okay. saying, how is it that everyone is being so polite? What, why are they being so patient? Because we're in Canada. What's wrong with this country? Um, these people must have bladders of a camel. I don't know what that means. Meanwhile, I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that it. great. <laughs> I like how, I like how um, you're starting to bite your nails. 
in the second yeah. panel, which I think is very, is good. And yeah. then I, I think the very, the bottom, the drawing at the bottom is really, a view is super fantastic. I also like the variety of shapes and the women in line too. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay. We're going to go to Alun next. Oh, can you unmute? Yeah. There we okay. Go. Sorry. Um, actually, I did mine on a tablet. Can I share my screen? Oh, yeah, you can. You've done that before. Hang okay. on. Yeah. Let me. Uh oh, it says host disabled participants. There you go. I just fixed it. Okay. Uh, there we go. So, can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, I wasn't sure what to draw, so I drew myself. I'm supposed to draw a character monologuing for three panels, but what character should I draw? Hmm, maybe I can draw myself talking to myself about what I'm going to draw a comic about. It's a comic about itself. Wait, that's kind of a cliche, isn't it? Got to be able to come up with something better than that. This is a terrible idea. Too late, I already drew it. So there's <laughs> um, my model. I love that panel is a light bulb. I've never seen that before. That's brilliant. I, I like playing around with panel shapes. I do. I do 24-hour comics a lot. You're talking about 24-hour comics earlier, mm -hmm. and I always try to do something different with panel shapes and always succeed. But I like, I don't know, it's kind of fun to play around with panel shapes and see what you can do with them. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really smart. Looks great. I love that first panel. All right. Okay, how do I Thanks so much. Here now? There we go. Okay. All right, we're going to go to Adam next. Here we go. Hi. Okay, so this is, let me see if my camera's there. This is a dialogue, actually monologue with my computer. Uh, so you have to set it up right here. There you go. So mm -hmm. into your password. Da, 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 da. Like try. This is all based on trying to log into the meeting today, by the way. <laughs> 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 wrong, 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 wrong. Computer dialogue. And so <laughs> death. I love it. Nope. Screenshot. So, that, that is fabulous. Um, yeah, no, that's great. I'm loving, I'm loving the two f first bases too. Like, I think, I think, uh, the way you show yourself being irritated is, um, yeah, that's just a second face in particular is very effective. That's great. And yeah, <laughs> uh, signing into, th that was my issue that I was late today is that I have a new computer and I forgot I have to set up zoom all from scratch and I forgot my password. It was a whole deal. So yeah. <laughs> here you are yeah mm -hmm. thanks so much and in the chat lizzie says that's my dad <laughs> hey lizzie <laughs> oh literally that's your dad oh i thought you meant your dad is like that oh hilarious oh how funny how great okay we'll go to cassie now <laughs> hello okay so um i drew a comic about a meeting i had today with a vp at my work so okay um He's telling me about how he loves to prank the other VP. And he's like, oh, we've done it so many times. And then he says, one thing you should know about me is that I hate confetti. And then all I could think about was filling his entire office with confetti. Beautiful. <laughs> I love the way you draw yourself, too. That's like such a pretty oh. character design. Oh, and this thank is, you. This is a very okay. polished comic for 20 minutes. I'm, I'm very impressed. Well, I think, yeah, not my first webinar. That's good. Yeah. All right. So I got one. I'm, I'm a drop in. So this is what it is. Uh, so we all sometimes have days where we kind of hate work. So yes. mine is uh, waking up at 6 a.m., going, what time is it? And then drinking some coffee, going, uh, sweet nectar. <laughs> and then coming <laughs> into work going, I got out of bed for this. <laughs> See, and this is a stick figure thing. Is that the rage that you're feeling in the last panel is very real. That was, that's great. Definitely. And a lot like that uh, Merrick ben Bennett that you showed with that really accessible emotional states in those stick figures. Thanks so much. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. It's more important than beautiful drawing. So it's good. All right. We're going to go to Jeannie next. Mine is pretty much a carbon copy of Adam. <laughs> uh, but a little bit different outcome, I guess. I don't know. All right. So first panel is, what is it I need to remember to do first thing today? Hmm. And then, oh, yeah. Check my bank account. 
So let's see, enter my login and password. What, wrong password? No, that can't be. Uh, I'll try again. What, wrong password? No. And then uh, calling uh, tech support. And um, it says, your wait time is undetermined. All agents are helping others stay on the line and we will be with you, blah, blah, blah. And then music, okay, but this is the correct password. And then, sorry, but we can't hear you because we are talking with other people. And then that's the outcome later that same week. And I give up. This is, this is <laughs> I'm obsessed with that third panel. The eyes that you did are, I love this. This is like, a, I feel like this is an aesthetic that was more common in like the like 70s and 80s, which is really my aesthetic when it comes to like editorial cartooning uh, specifically. There's a, I, I own a couple of anthologies of women's editorial comics and I feel like this would fit right in there. And when I say that, I mean it as the highest compliment. Like oh. I love the art in this, I love it. Oh, thank you, thank you. You have a name for what <laughs> Yeah, I believe, I don't know if it's still in print, but there is one called, let me grab it really quickly. And then the Liza Donnelly one is, is a good one too. You should know about that one. I assume Anna might mention that. So this is something I bought. I go to a, I doubt this is still in print because it looks like I bought it in 2002 for $2.99. But this is what I would look for. Um, I feel like, uh, oh, this is, um, Oh, dude, is it actually Roz Chat? It's yeah, Roz Warren is uh my bad. Uh is the person that uh curated it, but I feel like this would fit right in here. Um, so I love it. Oh. The best Thanks. contemporary can you oh. show it one more time? There we go. Women's right. humor. Oh, that's Nicole Hollander on the front. It is. Yeah, so there's all sorts of like you could totally fit into this. Yay. Like, Cool. Well, I'm obsessed with that fourth panel. I love that droopy hold. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let's look at it one more time and then we'll go to Jackie. Yeah, look at that. That's great. <laughs> so sad, so sad. They get you every time. Anyway. Thanks so much, Jeannie. We're gonna thank go to you. Jackie next. All right. So this is a three panel dealie and it's me first. Um, Ah, great, another high-functioning autistic who doesn't want to, uh, to group themselves together with the rest of the hand-flapping bedwetters. It's like me looking at Twitter. Then, so sick of the bogus hierarchy in the ESD community. Mm -hmm. And it'd be kind of having an ugly cry at the end. I wish it could be different for my daughter. Oh, wow. So it'd be kind of I these are incredibly effective. Uh, they're incredibly effective the way that you're showing your expression. I like that you also uh, did under the glasses, right? Because I think yeah. that is something. I think that is something that people like when they get really in a bad spot, like they're not, you know. Versus, like I think a lot of people would draw it just like this, and I, I think that that really conveys how upset you are. Very yeah. well done. Thank you. Really great, Jackie. Thank you. Thanks. And Mishka is here with the technology, with the high tech show. Whoa. Mom is so not Berkeley. <laughs> there's, there's a local um, thing where people say, your mom's so Berkeley and they share Berkeley things. So this is about when I first moved to Berkeley and I had a big yard and both my neighbors on each side um, asked me when I was putting up a clothesline, is your dryer broken? And you can use our laundry room if you want. And I, at first I reacted, ha ha, no, it's fine. Um, I'm making a clothesline. And then, um, then I got sad. I'm like, wait, does my line bother them? What's with the city? It used to be the center of eco-consciousness. And I got mad. These people, they buy the property in per Berkeley and chase out all the old, old school environmentalists. And finally, I ended up with, yay, hey, everyone, it's a solar-powered dryer. <laughs> you want one, too. That's great. Screenshot of that. <laughs> with me or with? <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, is it? Funny. 
there's another that's another great drooping panel right that upper right one i really love that one yeah the body language in this is super good yeah your mom is so not <laughs> i also love that i just love the entire visual style of all of it um oh, thank you um thanks mishka okay we're gonna go to jk we're gonna unmute them play spotlight there we go hello uh this is my first time too um Welcome. So I've never done this either. I'm going to do my best to show you my comic. Um, so this is me because <laughs> I really enjoy several podcasts and it's fun that my 10 year old child enjoys them now too. Um, I look, you know, home and, and, and I'm just chatty. And then uh, my face breaks out in a, in a sweat and a rictus grin as I'm holding in the tension during my conversation. Uh, I said, but he's been listening to the back catalog of one on repeat nonstop for weeks. <laughs> and I'm going to mm, crap. And this is the podcast coming in from, you know, the next room as I have just completely given in to the, um, <laughs> I'm listening to the same two voices who I, 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 I love this podcast, but the second panel is so good. Oh my goodness. That's fabulous. And I, I love the way you draw yourself too. These are great. And also I love, I'm all, I am a big fan of filling a text bubble with way too much text because there is way too much monotonous BS going on in the background. So I, I love this. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks. And this is a good reminder to everybody to share in um, on social media, you know, don't let this be the only chance we get to see it if you can post it and so we can get a longer look at those great characters we'd love that we'll go to cheryl next um here we go all right let's see i hooked up my phone flip my phone backwards oh it's so hard where's the backwards button i think it's in the little picture right there it is. Okay. Hey, oh, nice dog. That's a good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had, yeah, I had a <laughs> monologue, um, and so I was able to add characters to it. So that's it. I'm just gonna say it. America is addicted to Adderall. When I worked in Canada, adults were simply not prescribed ADHD medicine. It was only used for children. In Canada, I worked at over 20 different pharmacies. Only at one pharmacy did I have one adult on a stimulant and he was on the spectrum. When I moved to the US over 15 years ago, I was blown away by all the stimulant scripts for adults, for entire families, mom, dad, teenage children. I see more scripts for adults than I see for kids. I used to joke that every soccer mom needs their prescription speed so they can drive, work two jobs and drive the kids to gymnastics and piano and get dinner on the table. I couldn't believe when I saw actual prescription speed at one pharmacy. I've never seen it prescribed since then. This is the prescription speed. Almost 2 billion tablets of Adderall were dispensed to Americans last year. And that's just Adderall, brand and generic. That doesn't include all the other Schedule II stimulants like Ritalin, Focalin, Dexedrine, et cetera. I asked a Canadian friend recently if Canadian adults are on stimulants now or not. He says he sees maybe three scripts a week from psychiatrists. I see three scripts every 30 minutes. There are apparently 41 million users in the US. That's my strip. That's fabulous. Cheryl, can Thank we you. see it pulled down all the way? Yeah, yeah let's see the yeah. whole thing. Oh, okay. Wow, that's great. Thank you. And Anna, a great use of your prompt to make one panel full figure. And it, she's well, standing no, in that that's map, really right? Mm -hmm. yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. yeah, that's really powerful. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. A lot of love in the chat over that. We're going to go to Tom, Mr. Tom next. Myself. Hey, it's great to be here. Also my first time. Uh, mine doesn't really have a... Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so the first one is I'm. Oh wait, wait. I got to flip it around, right? No, no we can oh, see it. It's forward. Okay. 
Yep. Is it yeah. is it the right way? Yep. Is the text right? It's great. Yep. I'm so angry. I'm so angry. And then people are terrible, right? And then he's like, uh, except for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Thanks. Can we see that first panel close up a little more? Yeah. I really like yeah. that first panel. Look at that. I'm so angry. <laughs> this, um, there's a, there was a show on MTV back in the 90s called Syphil and Ollie, and it was two sock puppets. And oh, right, they, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I remember that. The expressiveness of this very simple character is giving me Syphil and Ollie energy. And I mean that as it's one of my favorite shows of all time. So like Yeah, that's good. I, it, I remember and, that. I and remember it's that. Super simple. It's literally just a sock puppet, but your guy with just like the two dots in the mouth, we <laughs> totally get what he's feeling. It's great. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Thanks. It's so very cathartic. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, we'll go to Renee next. Hi, um, this is kind of embarrassing, but I'm cynical. <laughs> so, oops, is it showing right? Oh, okay. It's getting back in there, yeah. It's just taking a second. We got uh, it. Uh, the only thing is I really can't see what the heck I wrote. Wait, okay, why did that lady... Stare at me. Do you want us to read it? We might be able to read it. Oh, you can understand what I wrote. Okay. <laughs> Why did that lady stare at me? Uh, uh, she didn't she ever uh, hasn't she seen other people in the store? I mean, she almost walked to my cart. I stopped my cart and she almost uh, that word I can't read snickers snickered at me. What an attitude. Okay, that that one I got. <laughs> it's it's tricky. The lady on the bus stared at me like I was crazy. Is this, am I reading this right? Okay, yeah. I was crazy <laughs> just because uh, my, uh, oh, that, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Something. sorry. Um, wait a minute. Okay, the, the lady on the bus stared at me like, oh, crap. What did I write? <laughs> oh, oh, I meant like, yeah. Okay, the lady on the bus stared at me like she was crazy, or I was crazy, just because my hair is sticking up. No reason to be scared. Wow, like she needs to get over herself. Like she never seen someone with their hair sticking up. <laughs> um, and then the last one is life is so stressful. I, uh, I should never leave my house. Everyone seems self-absorbed and mean. Ah, I don't. I don't want to get COVID from people who <clears throat> who cough and don't do social distancing. I should never leave my, my house. <laughs> well, what I will say is that I could not read your panels, but I knew the drawings were expressive enough um, and conveyed enough emotion that I could see you having a meltdown. Uh, <laughs> so very well drawn. You did that narratively great. And when I, because I couldn't read it, isn't necessarily because it's illegible as much as it is, I don't have my glasses. So I have no idea. I can't read any of these comments right now, but uh, <laughs> you, I can tell you that at least visually you conveyed your meltdown very well. Thank you. Very effective. Fabulous. Thank you. And somebody in the chat says, amen, sister. All right, we'll go to Jordan. That might be it for us. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Um, hold on. Give me one second. I also did it on a tablet, so I'll share my screen. There we go. Can y'all see it? Let me move yeah. this uh, away. Um, I am a very chill person and actually don't really rant a lot. Uh, <laughs> so I actually drew the panels first and then uh, then tried to fill in and make it a story or a narrative. But uh, yeah. I was like, I have no idea how to be a proper monster. I'm much more chill. Uh, oh shoot i can't read it because people just want to put me in boxes <laughs> yeah they love labels and uh confines it sucks it's, i'm <laughs> i much I'm... rather enjoy, enjoy the flowers this is great um yeah yeah thank you <laughs> uh thank you so yeah. much yeah thank you okay uh, and I think we had one more, Lizzie. Um, let's see, ask you to unmute. 
Oh, wait, hang on. I can't seem to. There you go. Hey. -o. Uh, hi, Dad, if you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took a while to think of something, too, because I think I'm also too chill for a monologue. So mine's about napping. Um, so, And I did pin and brush this time. Wow. Uh, so sometimes I need to recharge my batteries. Uh, but sometimes you have to push through. Sorry, it's hard to read. You just have to push through. So there's my full body shot. Um, also, it's kind of hard to do expression of just not a lot of energy. So there's not a lot going on. Um, sometimes you have to push through so. till you find uh, till you find the time and space to rest. So all the cozy and the jumping into the cozy chair, good time. Fabulous. No, I think the line, a single line under an eye to show exhaustion is very effective. Totally. Like, yeah. So you did, you did good. I, I, and also it's, it's just beautifully drawn. Yeah. It's very well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I envy I people, people. I will say that right now. I will. I envy the people that are just like, I don't know how to rant angrily. <laughs> <laughs> so you also gave people the option to be excited about something, but I think That's people true. forgot that, you know? Yeah. You know, I think the problem it, is that I was probably angrily ranting and it came off of. <laughs> no, I, I was provoking it. Uh, Lizzie, you got two people in the chat saying that second panel is really great. And I agree. Can we see that second panel one more time? Oh, it's so good. Yep. It's great. Really fun. Thanks. Thanks so much. All right. We'll go back to Anna. Anna, thank you so much. What a fun, what a fun evening. And um uh there we go sorry i just had the lower hand yeah it's always fun to have you here um you're just such an expressive cartoonist i know that that keyword was in your title but i, I mean that in, in general that's like just something you're really super good at so it's always good to connect and it's always good to hear how you do it i'm also super excited by what you're doing now teaching young people this way of expression you know yeah i like it despite my best efforts so yeah <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So I'm going to ask uh, everybody to unmute and uh, give, uh, let's see, how do I do that? There we go. And give Anna a send off and say thank you very much. And thank everybody for being thank here. You, we have Anna. lots thank more. You. Thank, thank you. 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 Have a good night. Much. That was so great. <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Incredibly sweet. Happy 